Alrighty, yo, what is going on? If you're buying it's your boy, Mr. DDG94, back with another reaction video. Today, we're going to react to how Kobe Bryant won his most important rings. Without further ado, let's get right into it. On June 17th, 2010, the Los Angeles Lakers defeated the Boston Celtics in a four point win in game seven of the NBA Finals. I remember that I was over at my that dad's house. They completed back to back championships for the Lake Show and marked the fifth and final championship for Lakers legend Kobe Bryant. Getting to those championships was a complicated journey for Bryant and the Lakers, but how did that team transition from the three peat years to the back to back championship years? Let's go back. Six years earlier, in the 2004 NBA Finals, the Shaq and Kobe Lakers were going for their fourth NBA championship against the Detroit Pistons. That duo was one year removed from their three-peat and had a season full of drama. The Lakers began that season by signing two aging stars in Karl Malone and Gary Payton, forming what some of the time were calling a super team. Kobe Bryant was facing legal problems off the court, traveling back and forth throughout the season to appear in legal court while investigations were taking place. To add to the commotion, the future for many Lakers seemed uncertain. Was Kobe leaving LA that summer? Was Phil Jackson retiring as a head coach? And headlines were buzzing about the supposed feud between Bryant and O'Neal. Even with the ups and downs of that season, the Lakers still managed to make it to the NBA Finals. But that series would mark the end of the Shaq and Kobe era Lakers. The Detroit Pistons became the 2004 NBA champions after a gentleman sweep, leaving the Lakers in a position to make some difficult decisions. The major headline around the league tonight, the Los Angeles Lakers and Miami Heat have agreed to a trade that will send Shaquille O'Neal, one of the greatest big men of all time, to sunny South Florida. On July 14th, less than one month after the Pistons had secured that championship, the Los Angeles Lakers traded superstar Shaquille O'Neal to the Miami Heat in exchange for Lamar Odom, Karan Butler, Brian Grant, and a future first round pick. Quite a reasonable package for one of the greatest players of all time. To add to the roster changes, the Lakers decided to let go of Phil Jackson, a coach who had led the team to four finals in the five years he was in LA. The season that followed, 2004-2005, was rough for Kobe and the Lakers. Kobe was an all-star and made an all-NBA team, but the Lakers missed the playoffs for the first time in 10 years after a disappointing 34-48 record. Following that season, the Lakers reunited with coach Phil Jackson, who agreed to return as the head coach on a three-year deal. With their coach's return, the Lakers were back in the playoffs, but weren't the same force with their new unit, even with their old coach. That year, they were eliminated in the first round, but Kobe's former teammate was in the NBA Finals, winning his fourth championship with his new co-star teammate Dwayne Wade. The next season, 2006-2007, Kobe Bryant switched from number 8 to number 24. While that change would symbolize a change in Kobe's career, the Lakers were still eliminated in the first round of the playoffs. Those two first round exit years were ugly for the Lakers, but Kobe was great. In both seasons, he led the league in scoring with a monstrous 35.4 points per game in the 05-06 season and 31.6 points per game in the 06-07 season. Following the Lakers' elimination in the 2007 playoffs, ESPN reported that Kobe Bryant was requesting a trade. While that trade never came to fruition, the Lakers entered the 07-08 season uncertain how the team would look in the near future. Luckily, the changes that came didn't involve their superstar. They started the 07-08 season looking like one of the best teams in the league. Their young center, Andrew Bynum, and Lamar Odom were proving to be formidable second and third options. But in January, Bynum injured his knee and was expected to be out until the end of March. But a couple weeks after that injury, the Lakers pulled off an absolute robbery of a trade, quickly bringing their team back into championship contention. The Lakers sent a package to Memphis and received a career four-time All-NBA future Hall of Fame big man, Pau Gasol. That trade met severe criticism from NBA media, the Grizzlies fan base, and even Greg Popovich. 
With Gasol added to the starting lineup, the Lakers finished the season strong, going 29-9 after the trade. They finished that season as the one seed, and Kobe Bryant was awarded the Most Valuable Player Award after a season of per-game averages of 28.3 points, 5.4 assists, 6.3 rebounds, and 1.8 steals. The Lakers were dominant in the playoffs, with a combined record of 12-3 after three rounds but ultimately they would fall short in the NBA Finals to the newly assembled Boston Celtics, led by their big three, with Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, and Ray Allen. After a six-game competition, the Celtics were champions. Following that series, Kobe Bryant was in a tough place. For his career, he was 3-2 in the finals, the two losses being the most recent attempts. For years now, the media had questioned Kobe's ability to win, becoming especially critical after Shaq captured his fourth championship, raising questions like, could Kobe win without Shaq? Could the Lakers win with Kobe's style of play? But soon, the media narratives would be silenced. With a full season ahead of them, Kobe and Powell began the 2008-2009 season with a championship on their mind. They conquered a deep Western Conference and finished the season with the top seed after a 65-win season. Kobe didn't win the award that year, but had a very similar season statistically to his MVP year. The Western Conference was strong that season, and in the first round of the 2009 playoffs, the Lakers matched up with the number eight seed Utah Jazz. Underscoring the strength of that conference, the Jazz, as the lowest playoff seed in the West, possessed a 48 and 34 record. For comparison, if that Jazz team was placed in the 2023 playoffs with that record, they would be tied with the number three seed Sacramento Kings. But even in a strong conference, the Lakers showed why they were the number one seed. They started the series winning the first two home games. Then Utah pulled off a two-point victory in game three, but the Lakers quickly returned to the level of play they showed all season and ended the series following back-to-back -back wins. Up next was the Houston Rockets, with 53 wins to their credit and an imposing front line of Yao Ming, Luis Scola, and Aaron Brooks. The Rockets also had their defensive stopper in Ron Artest, and although the series went the distance, none of the games were very close. Ultimately, the Lakers would move on. The number one seed Lakers next faced the number two seed Denver Nuggets. The Nuggets had a great season of their own, with an exciting team that featured Carmelo Anthony's explosive scoring. In Game 1, Melo and Kobe had an absolute scoring battle. Carmelo would finish with 39 points to Kobe's 40, but Pau Gasol's 14 rebound double-double would push LA over the top, taking Game 1 by just 2 points. Game 2 was much of the same. This time, Anthony got the best of Bryant, outscoring him 34-32. With a big game from Chauncey Billups, the Nuggets were able to even the series after another close game, just edging the Lakers by 3 points. In Game 3, Kobe kept up his scoring, recording another 40-point game, while Carmelo struggled from the field. The Lakers had a great fourth quarter and took a series lead, but Game 4 would bring the series even again, despite a game-high 34 points from Bryant. Games 5 and 6 would mark the end of Denver's season as the Lakers won in convincing fashion. The Lakers were again in the NBA Finals, but the results were a little anticlimactic. They were expected to make it back to the Finals. In fact, the two teams that had the best preseason odds to win a championship that year were the Lakers and the Celtics, a potential Finals rematch of the year prior. But that year, Boston fell short in large part due to a Kevin Garnett knee injury. But even without Boston there, throughout the season and at the start of the playoffs, NBA fans were looking forward to the potential Kobe and LeBron finals matchup. The Cavaliers led the East that year. And LeBron failed us. And had the best. And LeBron failed us. We never got that matchup because he couldn't get past the White Howard and the goddamn Orlando Magic. This is your king, right? He's so fucking great. He can do no wrong. But yeah, he couldn't get past the weak ass. Uh, you, and you can't put it on the team. That team won 60 some games. Damn near 70 games. That team damn near won 70 games that season. That man was the MVP that season. How the fuck you can't get past your Orlando Magic? And don't say it was his team fault. It wasn't the team. It's the fact that he ain't that 
guy that y'all claim he is, bro. It's 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 just levels to this shit, bro. Y'all just don't understand. Y'all LeBron fans don't understand. He was expected to go to the finals. He swept. This is the thing that people don't understand. They swept the first two teams of. They swept the first two teams they played that year, bro. That's the part that people don't understand. They swept the Atlanta Hawks and the fucking um. Yeah, who they playing? Who else they playing? Who else did they play that that year? Oh, Detroit, Detroit. They swept Detroit and Atlanta. Had a two zero sit. Had a two zero lead on the map on the Magic and blew it. Nigga, that's LeBron. That's y'all king. He couldn't even make it to the finals against the most. This is what would have. This is what would have put all the LeBron and Kobe arguments to bed. But LeBron didn't show up, and Kobe did. That's why we put Kobe over LeBron because Kobe showed up when it fucking mattered, man. It's not a debate, LeBron fans. It's levels to this. You just have to understand that, man. Y'all swear up and down, this man is great. Great in so many aspects, but he couldn't get the job done. Kobe could get the job done with less. LeBron couldn't. Best overall record in the league after their 66 win season. But LeBron and the Cavs were bested in the Eastern Conference Finals by Dwight Howard and the Orlando Magic. The 2009 Finals weren't particularly competitive. The Lakers played the Magic star well, holding Howard to just 15.4 points per game for the series. But for Kobe, he was locked in. He started the series with a 40-point game in a Lakers 15-point victory. In the five-game series, Bryant averaged an impressive 32.4 points per game, 5.6 rebounds per game, 7.4 assists per game, and 1.4 steals and blocks per game. With that dominant performance, Kobe was named the Finals MVP, and the Lakers were again champions. That series was pivotal for the legacy of Kobe Bryant. He had silenced the media narratives that he couldn't win without Shaq, or that the Lakers couldn't win with his high-volume offensive style. But there was still a major objective left on the Black Mamba's mind, that being to beat the Celtics. The 2009-2010 defending champion Lakers went into the season looking similar to the year prior, save two changes. First, Trevor Ariza was no longer a Laker. Ariza had somewhat of a breakout couple years in LA and signed with the Rockets that offseason. Second, the Lakers signed Ron Artest to a five-year deal. By that point in his career, Artest had already made four all-defensive teams and was a big signing for LA. The reigning champs were once again dominant in the regular season, but that dominance didn't come with ease. That season was riddled with injuries. For example, Bynum was coming off a knee surgery that required him to wear a brace throughout the whole season. Gasol suffered a hamstring injury in the preseason that forced him to miss the first 12 games. Ron Artest experienced a shoulder injury in December that affected his play, but he chose to remain in the lineup. That same month, Kobe broke his index finger on his shooting hand, an injury that standardly requires a player to sit out for at least six weeks. But Kobe was no standard player. It was later reported that team trainers explained to Bryant that the bone fragments could heal while he played if he was willing to endure brutal treatment to minimize the swelling. Lakers trainer Gary Vitti explained that the treatment was akin to squeezing a tube of toothpaste with maximum force. Kobe, of course, remained in the lineup with his signature tape finger. And even with a broken finger, Kobe played well, winning the December Western Conference Player of the Month the same month that he suffered the injury. He finished the regular season having played 73 games. The Lakers finished the season first in the West for the third consecutive time. The Western Conference was again really strong. For example, 
The Rockets missed the playoffs that year, being two games over 500, and they weren't very close as the nine seed. In fact, the first round matchup for the Lakers was the Oklahoma City Thunder, who finished as the eight seed after the young Oklahoma City in the Thunder team. season. The Thunder team featured three future MVPs in Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, and James Harden. Both teams were able to defend their home courts for the first five games, leaving the Lakers with a 3-2 series lead set to play Game 6 in Oklahoma City. With an intense environment, Game 6 featured 15 lead changes, and OKC was up by three with about two minutes remaining. Then Kobe hit a signature fadeaway two-pointer to bring the game within one point. And with the game clock running down, Pau Gasol's offensive rebound and putback sealed the deal for the Lakers. Round two was less competitive. The Lakers swept the Jazz, led by Kobe's 32 points per game. That Jazz team was a solid 53-win group, but the Lakers again proved that they were on a different level from the competition. In the Western Conference Finals, the Lakers faced the Phoenix Suns. Like the first round matchup against the Thunder, the Lakers and the Suns both defended their home court games through the first five. And in game six, Kobe put on a classic performance, recording 37 points, including 11 points in the fourth quarter to put the game away, setting the stage for a finals rematch between the Los Angeles Lakers and the Boston Celtics. The matchup between the two most storied franchises in NBA history was everything fans could have hoped for. The teams traded games through the first four, then Boston took a 3-2 series lead with Game 5. With the season on the line, the Lakers held the Celtics to 67 points, taking Game 6 in a 22-point victory. That game, Kobe recorded 26 points, 11 rebounds, and 4 steals, and Pau Gasol supported with 17 points, 13 rebounds, 9 assists, and 3 blocks. The 2010 NBA Finals were then set to be decided in a Game 7. That game has since been described as gritty, ugly, physical, and defensive. The Celtics shot better from the field that game, but the Lakers beat them in free throws, getting to the line for 20 more attempts than the Celtics. Game 7 featured a combined 25 turnovers, 44 fouls, and the scoring leader, Kobe Bryant, scored just 23 points on 25% from the field, shooting just 6 for 24. The Celtics held the lead for the majority of the game, but Kobe's 10-point fourth quarter pushed the Lakers over the top, crowning them as the 2010 NBA champions. With his fifth championship and second consecutive finals MVP, Kobe Bryant solidified his place in NBA history as one of the all-time greats. Kobe is often remembered for his winning mentality and unmatched skills, but his ability to rise from controversy, criticism, and doubt and propel his team to two more championships is what separates him from his basketball peers. Thanks for watching Basketball Pantheon. What are you most proud of from your 20 seasons? Um, may sound a little shallow, but I gotta say beating the Celtics <laughs> in game seven. <laughs> Um, hey. That's what I'm most proud of because it, it, was, it was the hardest. And we were able to collectively dig deep together and say, all right, we're going to pick this. But yeah, man, it's just going to about do it for this one. RP to the Bean, RP to the Mamba, Kobe, right, right, right.